Good morning, church. It's good to see you, except I can't see you, but you can see me. So obviously we had snow, so here we go. So this morning I want to share a message with you on Are You Not Afraid? And it comes out of Numbers chapter 12. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman that he, whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. So they said, Has the Lord indeed spoke only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. You want to be really careful about what the Lord hears. Now, the man Moses was very humble more than all men who were on the face of the earth. And suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out, you three, to the tabernacle of meeting. And I have a feeling that's got to be a really scary sign. Kind of like when your mom says, Come here. You know, this is not going to be good. So he calls them out to the tabernacle of meeting. So the three came out, and then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both went forward, and then he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. He is faithful in all my house. My servant Moses, not so with my servant Moses, he is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face, even plainly, not in the dark, sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So I think God is kind of mad here. Because he's saying, I know who the prophets are. You don't have to tell me that you prophesied. But it's different with my servant Moses. Moses had an amazing relationship with God. Probably the only person that had that kind of relationship with him. He said he's faithful. I speak face to face to him. Not in dark form. Why? Why were you not afraid to speak against him? So the anger of the Lord was aroused against him, and he departed. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam becomes leprous, white as snow. Then Aaron turns to Miriam, and there she was, a leper. So Aaron said to Moses, Oh, my Lord, please do not lay this sin on us in which we have done foolishly, in which we have sinned. And please do not let her be as one dead whose flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. So they just got through bad mouth and Moses. They just got through talking about that weren't they as important as Moses? They were prophets too. Why did God favor Moses? And so they're bad mouthing him. God chewed them out, and now Miriam has leprosy. And who do they turn to? Moses, the very one they had all these bad things to say about. And Moses, being the most humble man that ever walked on the earth, responds to them. Instead of saying, good enough for you, you know, that'll teach you. That's probably what we would say. That'll teach you to talk about me. But he didn't. Moses cried out to the Lord saying, please heal her, O God, I pray. Now that's got to touch the heart of God because he loved Moses so much and they had such a close relationship. But God was not done. Then the Lord said to Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, would she not be shamed for seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days, and afterward she may be received again. So Miriam was shut out of the camp seven days, and the people did not journey until Miriam was brought back in again. So God is saying, even if some little thing would have happened with Miriam, would she have not been shut out of the camp for seven days? But this was not a little thing. This was a big thing. So I could do way worse, Moses, but this is what I'm going to do. She is 
going to be punished for what she said and what she did. And so to be shut out of the camp, you had to stay out on the outside of the camp, obviously. But when we consider the several million people that were in the desert with these people, they all had to wait seven days too because they weren't going to move until Miriam was back in the camp. So Moses, the man who had God's heart, Moses is the only person in the Bible that spent days face to face with God. It's a little wonder that God was so angry with Miriam and Aaron. When it was time to free the children of Israel from the Egyptians that God looked at Moses. Moses had gone from having everything in Pharaoh's house to tending sheep with his father-in-law. Forty years of taking care of sheep. And God looks down and sees humble Moses. So I think God figured after 40 years of taking care of sheep, he might be able to handle the children of Israel in the desert because he was going to have to shepherd them also. It is now time for the man with a shepherd heart to shepherd the children of Israel, and God makes his move. We all know about the burning bush and about Moses. Only protest was he didn't speak well, and after some debate, <laughs> it's interesting that he knew that God to do it, could do it. He knew that God would help him. He saw the burning bush. He saw the miracle, but he was willing to debate with God about whether he could speak or not. He didn't seem to believe that God would give him the ability to speak. So God finally just said, okay, take your brother Aaron with you. We all know how it went in Egypt with plagues and kinds of, all kinds of disasters. And the humble man of God persevered and left Egypt with the people and all the riches. So it was a really harsh time in Egypt. We, we remember the plagues, the frogs, the locusts, the blood. Every, it was a mess. It was awful. And so by the time they left, the people were saying, here, take this, take this. And they gave them the riches of Egypt. So they left with the people and all of the riches. So now Moses is standing at the Red Sea with millions of people behind him, along with Pharaoh's army coming after him. And this is a really intense. Now the people, they're really rejoicing. And now all of a sudden they look over, they see Pharaoh's army. The whole scene changes, doesn't it? You brought us out here to kill us. Why would you bring us out here to kill us? You know, I think I would have killed them. Said, you want to be dead? Be dead. But he didn't. Why? Because he's got a shepherd heart and he's a humble man. So he ends up standing at the Red Sea and God tells him to hold out his rod. And we know the story. The water opens up. They walk through on dry ground. The water closes up and drowns Pharaoh's army. And some people say that that water was only six inches deep, and that's why the children of Israel could cross over. But then my thought is, so Pharaoh's army drowned in six inches of water? So I think it was way deeper than that. So God loves this humble man so much that he gives him the wisdom and the strength to re lead a rebellious and ungrateful people. We see only one mistake that Moses makes. That's striking the rock twice. One mistake Moses made. And then made it 40 years, one mistake. Wouldn't you like to think you'd go 40 years and only make one mistake? I mean, that would be pretty amazing. So they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us? And the Lord had heard it. Aaron and Miriam were jealous of Moses' relationship with God, so they were critical of God. Aren't we prophets? Has the Lord not spoken through us? Got to remind God what we've been doing. In other words, aren't we just as important as Moses? And God makes it very clear, no, you're not. You were willing to let Moses go up on the mountain and face me? 
Remember that story? The mountain's on fire, thunder and lightning, and God's saying, don't touch the mountain. Don't let your animals touch the mountain. They're going to die. And the people were so afraid. They said, Moses, you, you go. You go talk to him. You go speak with him. He said, you were willing to let Moses go to the mountain and face me, and now you're jealous because he had a different relationship with me. And you are arrogant enough to speak against him. So you're jealous of the relationship that he had. Moses paid a price for that relationship with God, didn't he? And they were jealous, but they weren't real willing to pay the price. And many times with leadership and people around us, we get jealous of them, but we're not willing to pay the price that they've paid to get where they are. We just want to somehow leap over everything it took to get there. All of the years that Moses spent with God, all the times that Moses talked with God, all the times that God talked with Moses, all the times, all those times for years and years they did this. So of course, by the time they get to this point, they have an amazing relationship. But nobody else was talking with God like Moses was. In fact, Aaron was the one that when Moses was on the mountain, built this calf, this golden calf. This amazing thing happened. He said, I just don't know what happened. We just had this fire going and all the people threw their gold in the fire and poof, out came this golden calf. That was what Aaron's relationship with God was. And they were worshiping the calf. They forgot. God, to worship God, they were worshiping something else. And he said, you're so arrogant because you don't have this relationship. You didn't try to have this relationship, but you want the end result of Moses investing into this relationship. And we have that same opportunity with one another. We want to have relationship with God. We're going to have to invest into that relationship. That means we spend time talking with him. We spend time with him. We hear his heart. He hears our heart. We have that relationship. And we can have that relationship. But if we just want to skip through and somebody else do the praying and somebody else do the talking and somebody else do it, but I want the end result, God said it doesn't work that way. You're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. So he said, no, you aren't. You aren't as important to me as Moses is. And who are you? You're so arrogant to speak against him. When you've watched him go through all these things with these people, and then you speak against him. So no, you're not. So the worst possible response from God Leprosy is a death sentence. And the whole camp would know something terrible had happened. So they weren't going to have this little discourse with God and nobody ever know about it. By the time God got done with it, everybody was going to know about it. But what was God's message to everyone? Do not speak against Moses. Do not speak against my choice that I have made. You speak against me when you speak against who I have chosen. And so the whole camp, why aren't we moving? Because Miriam has leprosy. Miriam has leprosy. That was a real shock. She was kind of part of the leadership. She's outside the camp. Nobody's going anywhere until Miriam gets well. She's seven days out there. God wanted to be very clear how he felt about criticism of himself and of the man that he had called to be the leader. We have to be very clear about what God says about those that he puts over us. Leadership, the pastors, and different leaders. It's easy to be critical when you're not doing anything but sitting and watching and being critical. It's easy to do that because you don't have anything to go by. But when you get into that position, you find out it's way different. There's a lot more to it. And so sometimes the people that you may be critical of, you don't realize what did it take for them to get to that place that they're in. 
What did it take for them to be that leader? What did it take for them to be that pastor? What did it take? What did they give up? What did they sacrifice? What did they learn? What did they have to be disciplined about? And so before you get really critical of anybody, stop and think, how did they get there? What was their journey to get to that place? And then always come back to the fact that God chose Moses. So when you criticize Moses, you criticize God. And when you criticize the leadership that God has placed, you criticize God. And we don't want to be doing that. You want, if you want to have favor with God, pray for those who are in leadership over you. And if you think they're not doing the right thing, pray for them to do the right thing. But don't just be critical without knowing what it's all about. Don't be critical without having made the journey yourself. Don't be critical because God, is, he will take care of that. And he did with Miriam. And so being critical didn't just affect Miriam, but the whole camp. They did not move until God allowed her to be healed. And many times the church can be brought to a standstill by a critical spirit. Churches have been divided by a critical spirit. Pastors have been lost because of too much criticism and not enough encouragement. And so you're not here to criticize. You are here to encourage, to uplift. And if you think your leadership isn't doing what it should, then how much have you been praying for them? How often have you laid with your face to the ground saying, God, help them, encourage them, build them up. See, it's way easier to be critical, isn't it? It takes time to be an encourager, a supporter. So the church can be brought to a standstill, especially when they're critical against leadership. Aaron and Miriam had places of leadership, but it wasn't enough. They were right beside Moses. They did many things. We have Miriam's song. Aaron was priest. They had leadership position. It wasn't like they didn't have anything. They did. But they didn't have what Moses had. And so that's when the green monster came in. That Moses, why is Moses God's favorite? Don't we prophesy? Yes, we prophesy. Why is he the favorite in God? jumps all over them. So we don't want to be a Aaron and Miriam when it comes to leadership. Be an encourager. Be a builder. Interestingly enough, who did they turn to in this disastrous moment, this terrible time that happened? The one they had just been critical of. All of a sudden, they make an appeal to Moses. Well, why would you make an appeal to Moses? Why not make an appeal to God? Well, they didn't really want to talk to God right then because he had just got done talking to them, and that wasn't a really good conversation. So the only person they had left was the one that they had criticized. And sometimes you're going to find yourself in that place. The only person you have left to help you is maybe the person you've been the most critical of. And so they turn to Moses because they know, first of all, he's got a shepherd heart. They know that he loves them, and they know that he will make an appeal. So they turn to Moses. So many times people that we're jealous of are the ones we turn to in time of need. And after being ugly about Moses, that is who they turn to, to make an appeal to God Moses, make an appeal to God, because they knew they had no standing with God at that moment. They had nothing that they could lean on, that they could appeal to God. So they did the next best thing, and that was Moses. <clears throat> Excuse me. So many times, these are the people we turn to. Moses, having the relationship with God that he had, was able to make an appeal for Miriam. But even with that, God was not going to just drop the subject. He wasn't going to say, well, okay, Moses, you're my friend. I love you. Okay, I won't do anything. He was going to teach Miriam and the whole camp a lesson. 
So it wasn't just about Miriam. It was about being critical of whom God had chosen, and it was about being critical of God himself. And so this was going to be a lesson for everybody. So he couldn't let Mo, uh, Miriam off the hook. So he said, she's outside the camp. Well, they all knew it was disgraceful to be put outside the camp. You didn't want to be put there. And then to be there for seven days, and we're all waiting, you know, if it wasn't for Miriam, we could be moving. If it wasn't for Miriam, we could be packed up. If it wasn't for Miriam. So they probably weren't very happy with Miriam during that seven days that she was outside the camp. So God did not drop the subject. So the horrendous punishment, it was a terrible punishment. It was the worst punishment that you could have would be for God to turn you into a leper. I mean, you're done for as a leper. You're an outcast. And he made Miriam an outcast from the camp because of leprosy. The very person you're jealous of and speak evil of just may be the person that God uses in your time of need. The safest place to be with God is to uphold leadership that he has chosen and pray for them. You want to be safe with God, then uphold leadership. Pray for them because he has chosen them. A humble heart and a spirit go a long ways with God, but pride and arrogance will surely bring you down. So our, our lesson that we want to learn today is to be afraid. Miriam and Aaron were not afraid to criticize God. They thought they were criticizing Moses, but they were criticizing God, and they were not afraid to do it. And I say to you, be afraid to criticize God. Be afraid, because there will be a consequence to that. And so we want to be encouragers. We want to be supporters. We want to hold up. And if we think the leadership is wrong, then pray, God, pray to God. Help them. Change their mind. Don't just stand back and be critical because it robs you. And pretty soon people start moving back away from you because if you criticize that person, don't criticize me. I'll be next. You'll be next. You'll be next. There's no end to it. It's a very contagious thing, criticism. Because then other people, yeah, I noticed that too. Well, yeah, now that you brought that up, you know, and then start entering in. Be an encourager. God, I don't know what's happening here, but I'm praying for leadership. I'm praying for the people that you put in place because I'm trusting you that you will work in their lives. So let's be encouragers and let's be afraid enough of God to not criticize his choices. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you that, that you are an amazing God and you are righteous and holy God. And the decisions that you make are right. Always, every time, they are right. And we just pray, Lord, if we have a critical heart, right now I just confess that I want that critical heart gone. I'm going to quit being critical of the people around me. I want to be an encourager. I just pray, God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, help me to be an encourager. When I want to open my mouth the next time with a critical word, just remind me to shut it for a minute and find somewhere in my mind an encouraging word. And we just thank you, God, that you're an encourager to us. And we just thank you, we just love you. We just wanna say we love you and we thank you for being our God. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>